2016 was an uh, incredible year for me and I got time to read some of the really cool books which I'm very excited to share with you. I'm an undergraduate student who is uh, interested in health policy and also looking forward to go in the field of medicine. So a lot of books share the same common theme. There are other books that I have started. I just haven't um, yet finished those books, read, finished reading those books. So when I do that, hopefully I'll be able to share that with you as well. So the first book I'm going to share with you today is actually one of my favorite books. I personally think that this is the best book that's you know, ever been written, or one of the best books that's ever been written. It's When Breath Becomes Here by Paul Kalanithi, or Dr. Paul Kalanithi. Paul was a chief resident at Stanford um, when he was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer, and uh, he eventually died of that, but before death, he left a remarkable gift to humanity, to humankind, which is this book. This book is not just for students who are interested in going into healthcare, but for every human being, and it talks about Paul's life, uh, his journey to, uh, of becoming a physician, but also a lot about what is the meaning of life. When you walk towards what you really want in life, uh, it could be success, it could be happiness, whatever it is for you, you know. And then certainly one day you realize that you have a certain number of weeks, a certain number of years that you can live, everything changes. One of the stories that Paul wrote was my last day as a surgeon. So if you have read that, uh, and you liked it and you probably will find this book very interesting so I highly recommend that you read this book it's emotional it's um, it's full of um, it's full of a lot of things about Paul's life and uh, you know I wonder if if uh, if Paul would be alive I would want to go and shake his hand and you know thank him for this book uh, I have never met him in person but I can only imagine that he must be a very a remarkable human being a compassionate physician uh, and a wonderful uh, husband and a father. Thank you, Paul, for writing this book. The other book that I'm going to talk about is with one of my favorite writers, Atul Gawande. Dr. Gawande is a, a surgeon and a professor at the Harvard THN School of Public Health, and he is one of my definitely one of my favorite writers. I read this book, Being Mortal Medicine and What Matters in the End, and this is a great, great book. And this is not just again, this book is not just for students who are interested in healthcare but it could be interesting to everybody. This book talks about two things that modern medicine can fix, and I don't know if it will ever fix, which are aging and dying. And when you are at that very last stage of life, what makes life meaningful even during that point? One of the things that Abdul says in this book is, uh, safety is what we want for people we love, but autonomy is what we want for ourselves, right? This is a great book, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this book as well. The other book is, However Far the Stream Flows, The Making of Man Who Reveals Faces, Reveals Faces by Kofi Boheni. Dr. Boheni is, I believe, is one of the, you know, remarkable human being and he shares his story from Ghana to Russia to the United States and his journey of becoming a physician. But this book is also about a lot about life, about his service that he has given back as a physician, um, his relationship with his family, with God. And this is a this is a great book. Not only he he I feel that he is a remarkable physician, but also a wonderful and compassionate person after reading this book. I really enjoyed it. And Dr. Boheni is, you know, he's a professor at Johns Hopkins. Uh, facial plastic and reconstructive surgery, yeah, ENT surgeon, actually one of the best ENT surgeons in the world. And this is a, this is a great book about his life. So definitely recommend reading this book, and I really enjoyed it. The other book is also one of my favorite doctors, Dr. Q. Everybody calls him Dr. Q with love. Dr. Alfredo Quinianus Hinosoza. Uh, he was a professor of neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins, one of the best uh, um, neurosurgeons in the world, and now he is a uh, chairman of uh, neurosurgery at the Mayo Clinic and he is a remarkable human being. This book is this book is great. It's actually coming out as a movie um, and when I heard that I got really excited about it. Uh, this is a man who came from Mexico with very little knowledge about the English and uh, let alone about the country and medicine. Worked his way up as a migrant farmer worker went to community college, learned English, from there went to UC Berkeley, then to Harvard, UCSF, and then came to Johns Hopkins as a, as a, as a surgeon, as attending, as a professor, and worked his way up uh, to full professor. Not only he's a great neurosurgeon and a neuroscientist, but he's also a, just a wonderful human being. Dr. Q and his team, uh, they are just, just great people, uh, great people to work with, uh, a lot of empathy, 
um, a lot of enthusiasm um, and a lot of hope for the future that someday this uh, his team will uh, hopefully find cure for brain cancer or better ways to treat brain cancer so i really enjoyed reading this book and his and his life story so i highly recommend that the other book is your money or your life strong medicine for america's healthcare system this was actually one of the required readings for one of the classes that I took last year as an undergraduate student here, which was the US healthcare system. This book is from David Cutler. He's a professor at Harvard. Um, and this is also a great book, regardless of whether it is or it is not for your class. But this book, it will be interesting to, to you if you are also excited about health policy and you want to understand uh, our country's you know complicated, fragmented healthcare system in a lot of ways. This is actually a really, really good book. Uh, so I really enjoyed reading this book. That's all for today. I've started this complications, but I haven't really finished it, so hopefully. But 2016 is gone, and now it's 2017. It's another new year with new hope, new excitement, uh, new ways of learning how to be a better person every day. I am really excited for this year, and I want to know if you have read this book, some of the books that I shared, what did you feel about those books? Um, let's share with each other. If you have recommendations about the book that I should read in 2017, please uh, leave the comments down. What are the books that changed your life? What are the books uh, that touched your heart and your soul? Uh, what are the books that made you cry? What are the books that make you laugh? What are the books that kept you awake at night? So if you have those recommendations for me, leave them below. Let's talk with each other and share this information and make 2017 an incredibly rewarding year for all of us.